Hi, everybody. Um, and then we're going to get going. Uh, just a little bit of live trading news. We have the German ZEW survey for March. That's come out slightly above expectations. 48.5, the market had been looking for 48.1. Uh, so it rises in March, which is good news, obviously. Uh, good to see Germany doing well. Now, just bear with me one moment, guys. I'm just going to put that up on my system, on our trading platform here at Forex.com. Um, <clears throat> and then we will get going. Uh, what's been the market impact of that? Well, really, Euro dollar is still trading in a bit of a range, but it has jumped off those lows. So the lows today, 129.15-ish, highs 129.60. Right now, smack bang in the middle, just below 129.50. Right, I'm going to share my desktop now, so just bear with me. Great. So you should be able to see uh, my desktop, which is a bit of a, a crazy, uh, oh, damn, look, there you go. I'm doing the wrong thing. Hang on, everyone. Let me just cancel out this annotation. Um, sorry about that. This is just the pound. Um, I'll talk to you about that. But let's just take, since we've had the ZEW out already, let's take a quick look at what this means for Euro. And yes, we have jumped higher on the back of that ZEW data. So, you know, just laying out the scene, you know, I was, I was planning today and I thought, you know, what is, it's, it's been quite difficult. Um, oh, sorry, just bear with me one moment. I've just seen something that I've done incorrectly. It's actually been quite, it's been quite a difficult one almost um, to understand the last couple of trading days, right? I've had so many people come up and say, what's going on with Cyprus? Why haven't we seen, uh, or why still haven't, why still are we, are we seeing, um, you know, such complacency in the market almost? And, and certainly, you know, if not complacency, then for sure, um, uh, then for sure we've, we, we are seeing um, a muted reaction to what's been going on. Um, this is Euro Dollar. I'm just going to go back a few days just to show you what's happened. As you can see, this was the gap lower at the Tokyo Open. So post that, the news, as the market digested that news um, from Cyprus, and since then, we haven't managed to close that gap. That's not something that we've been able to do. However, we have held um, quite nicely above the, around about 1.30. So we haven't, you know, decisively broken below there. Now, let's take a look at that. And I'm going to show you as well a point of figure chart. I know some of you like them. Some of you have been joining for a while. I know I haven't looked at them for a while. But as you can see, yes, we've, you know, yes, we're below 130, obviously, in that kind of 130, 20 mark, which is the 200-day moving average. But what we haven't seen here is a very sharp sell-off, you know, back even back to those lows that we saw in November. We just haven't seen it, even though, uh, you know, Cyprus is potentially a game changer for the rest of the Eurozone. Um, potentially it could vote no today. There's a good chance it will vote no today and then it could be bankruptcy risk, etc., etc. Does the market just not care anymore? Well, I think the focus is on other things um, from a fundamental standpoint, um, but I think really the market will is waiting for that vote. I think it's we're on uncharted territory, so it's no wonder things aren't necessarily being priced in and instead people are staying on the sidelines. My view is that a no vote could actually cause a sharp sell-off. A yes vote which could cause a bit of a relief rally, maybe back to this double top here. So I'm not saying a massive relief rally, because I think that this Cyprus issue, combined with the fact Italy doesn't have a government, it's really adding to that case, making it harder to make a bull case for the euro, actually. Um, and so now the question is, just how far will we drop? Um, so I think, you know, if we were to see a bit of a relief rally on a yes vote, so that would mean that Cyprus does get the bailout, it's not going to, uh, it's going to at least avoid bankruptcy in the short term, uh, it's good news. So uh, potentially we could get back to this 131.5 level. See double top from there, not perfect, but good enough. This is a daily chart, by the way. The other thing I would add is just looking even at the MACD. Uh, you know, sentiment is draining. We're really moving sideways. We're not, um, we, we haven't moved, uh, we're not, we're not in directional territory at the moment. I think that, you know, the next leg of that is going to be dependent on a couple of things, the outcome of this Cyprus vote. But also, let's not forget, we have the start of a two-day FOMC meeting uh, on uh, today and tomorrow. I think that, if anything, all this Cyprus jazz is going to make um, the Fed very wary of, of how they say things. And I think they're going to be quite aware not to rock the boat, which could, be, which could again, kind of limit dollar strength because they're probably not going to say anything that suggests that they may um, 
which, or which could be perceived as, as uh, bringing QE to a, an abrupt end or, or, a, or an early end, if you like. Uh, we don't think they're necessarily going to do that. Okay, let's take a look just at the, an hourly chart on this. I also just want to show you the RSI. Um, so RSI kind of pointing down negative. It, they're all kind of moving in the right direction. On the on the on the um, on the daily chart, though, the RSI is starting to move towards. Um, you know, the, the one thing I would say is that you know we we are quite supported on the downside there. And as you can see, let me just use the extended one. Hang on. Uh, you can even see this just from kind of the from from you know this indicator and also the momentum indicator. We're still essentially pointing upwards a little bit. Um, now we are very close to some key levels, so it suggests to me you know from a from a, a price perspective, I'll get rid of this at MACD now so we can see a bit more. Uh, but from certainly from a price perspective, the the key thing, uh, the key support level to watch now is 128.80. Uh, for those of you who are looking um, at uh, um, you know, potential trade idea this week. I think that, you know, below 128.80, we're going to see a sharp sell-off, maybe back to those 126.95 levels. Now, I'm just going to get horizontal on us. So it's this low from here. So it's where we spiked down to. So that was the, the low that we saw on, on uh, during the Asia session um, on Sunday night. Um, we spiked down to there. We've managed to hold on. Um, we managed to hold on to that really key level, uh, 128.80. As you can see, it was a key level, a uh, key support zone here back in kind of December. Uh, it also has significance from November and was the low uh, from September, October time. So uh, it's, a, it's an important level, basically. And this is, you know, very, very good support. It managed to hold even with the Cyprus news. However, I think if we get a break below there, uh, then we could see uh, sharp declines, as I said, back to the world, those 126.95 levels in very short succession. So I think, in my view, a no vote um, is, is going to be a knee-jerk reaction lower uh, in the euro because, again, it opens up all this kind of breakup risk. Now, I had some good questions on... Um, uh, from uh, from uh, some Twitter followers, and um, one guy, John, said, uh, "Well, surely a new vote, whilst bad for Cyprus, is good for the euro." Um, I see what he's saying uh, regarding a no vote, because obviously, if you get if you cut loose your weakest link, then you're not as weak anymore, right? Um, but I think the trouble is, is that there's a few links. Um, it's a bit like when you have a necklace and you, you notice a couple of the links going, and all of a sudden it's not just one; but there's like three or four, and if one goes, it causes the rest to go. So is that continuous? Contagion risk, which yet again comes into play, um, is the fact that people will worry about, well, hang on a minute, they saved Cyprus, but surely they're going to get rid of Greece, and then surely it's going to be, you know, maybe it's not too much of a stretch to say, well, you know, what do we need Spain here for? Or Spain could say something like that, like, you know, why are we in the euro? We could have our own currency, we could kind of sort out our economy, etc., etc. Um, so is, is that risk, and, and, and why does that impact financial markets? Because for the last, you know, 10 uh, 12, 13 years, money, have been, money has been flowing into these countries like Spain and Italy, uh, Spain in particular actually, Spain, Portugal, Ireland, um, based on the fact that they were part of something bigger than themselves, based on the fact that they were the Eurozone. Uh, so regulatory issues were, were met, so companies didn't have to worry so much about them. Um, you know, obviously the currency was, was there as well. Uh, there was good governance. All of that type of thing fed into, the, fed into why companies were investing in, in Spain and Portugal in Ireland. Without that, um, I think there'll be some people who will worry that, um, with, or without those Eurozone structures, there'll be some who worry who will pull their money out on the back of that. So again, it could have unintended consequences, this vote today in Cyprus. Um, another thing that I think is rather strange is that the, uh, the, the finance minister, rather than vote, has gone to, uh, to Russia. So there could be something else up the sleeve here. Um, obviously, Russia has close links to, um, to uh, Cyprus, so it's worth watching. Uh, even for those of you who aren't kind of trading on it, it's certainly worth watching because I think it's an absolutely fascinating story but from a from a technical perspective um, <clears throat> right now if we get a surprise outcome um, and get through this 128.80 level we could easily get down to these lows here so that kind of 126.80 that's the low from November it wasn't that far away uh, remember it's certainly worth looking at now what about euro yen we know euro yen has been uh, kind of one of the key um, you know it's, 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 it's as you can see even here let me just refresh this I'm on my 
Actually, you can see it better on the hourly. Let me bring that up. As you can see here, um, this is the uh, this is your yen. So Friday, really nice, getting back up to those 126 levels. Now there were a couple of reasons. We had a very sharp sell-off, obviously at the Tokyo Open, on, due to Cyprus. However, there was a lot of selling interest actually before that, around about this 126 level, which is now key, um, a key um, resistance. But one thing I would say is that we've had this sharp move lower. Obviously, euro yen, uh, the yen acted a bit like a safe haven. Actually, I'm wondering are the Japanese authorities a little bit worried? Uh, acted as a safe haven on Sunday night. Uh, since kind of given back some of those gains. But what we have seen is that you know attempts at the euro to rally have been fairly futile or a bit pathetic even. We managed to get above this one or get around about 124 yesterday. But since then we've fallen off quite sharply. I mean we're down 50 pips. Um, it suggests to me that the will isn't there. People are still selling the euro on rallies, um, and we could potentially, uh, you know, see, you know, we've got all the way down to 121.50. Remember, we'd been at 126 on Friday. These are huge moves. Um, I think, you know, as usual, you see the explosive move um, in euro yen whenever we see a, whenever we see bouts of volatility pick up. So that would be kind of my one to watch, actually. Um, the other thing that we know, and I'm just going to bring up this. Hang on. Bear with me one moment. I'm just bringing up a chart that I put together yesterday. Oh, sorry. That's not what I want. I want to go back. Um, a chart that I put together yesterday, uh, which is Italian and Spanish um, yield spreads. Sorry, this has just gone a little funny. Let me just pull up the Italian one. Here we go. Um, as you can see here, uh, this is the uh, this is the yield spread between uh, so Italy and Germany, which is the yellow line, and Spain and Germany, which is the orange line. As you can see, so far away from those uh, dangerous highs that we saw in uh, in July last year, uh, it's not nearly as low as they were in January. Um, so it suggests that maybe things aren't as stable. Uh, so just looking at this chart, you can kind of almost map what's been going on without actually knowing the facts. So you could say something like, well, not quite as stable. That's why we've seen it moving higher. Um, and obviously, this kind of move, this jump higher here has been on the back of uh, Cyprus. But again, like I was saying, we're not nearly as high as we were even just from just at the end of February on the back of the Italian election risk. So there is a little bit of complacency here, I think, in the markets. Again, if we just take a look at the VIX. So remember, this is a gauge, the volatility index. Um, oh. Again, we spiked higher yesterday, as one would expect. Stocks came off. We had a lot of uncertainty out there. But again, not near, you know, we're only at 13. I mean, not that long ago, 13 was considered normal. You know, it was considered, you know, stable. Um, you know, it's lower than what we were in uh, in January, February. So there could be a lot higher to go. The markets have been quite complacent about this. And I do think that if we get a no vote and the real threat of bankruptcy comes up, um, that's going to have an impact on the markets. Because remember, this will be the first Western economy um, to have, uh, to, to go bankrupt. So Rob has just asked me a question. Uh, how, uh, do you think that Draghi would let all he's done so far go in vain? They made some stupid mistakes. They won't allow the Eurozone to fall apart in today's environment. Too much risk if they do let it break up. I agree with you. And that's why I think that if there's a no vote, um, it could actually be, um, it may not just be as simple as that, oh, my goodness, all of a sudden, Cyprus is going to leave the Eurozone. What I would say um, is, uh, so Jack has just asked about the two-year yield spread in the German. I'm going to look, I'm going to, I'm going to create that chart for you now, Jack. Just bear with me one moment. Um, but I do agree with you, Dr. Robin in the sense that, um, yes, um, I think that they would, there would be, um, Cyprus could vote no today just to call Europe's bluff to try and get better terms. Uh, I don't blame them for trying to do that. Um, all of a sudden, then you go back and you vote again. That's, that's happened in Europe before, right, whereby they haven't had the right vote the first time, and then they go back and they do it again with less onerous terms. So this isn't the end, but I would expect a knee-jerk reaction, a slight knee-jerk reaction lower, just in case Germany does say, I'm done. I'm cutting Cyprus loose. As I mentioned, like, you know, something, that, an interaction that we got on Twitter with that guy saying, well, yes, a no vote is bad for Cyprus, but it could be better for the Eurozone. It could be better for Merkel, for example, as she uh, leads up to her own federal election. So, um, uh, Jack, I'm going to do that for you now. Make that chart. This is how you make a chart in um, Bloomberg, for those of you who, who don't have it. It's all very easy. Uh, let's do German, U.S., 
And I'll tell you why. Because of the way... Oh, sorry, you wanted two years, didn't you? Let's go two. Uh, because of the way that Euro is, Euro dollars quoted, so you go Euro first, so it makes sense to have... Uh, then you'll see how they move together. Let's just finish that. And as you can see, so the 10-year, so Euro dollar's fallen in line with that yield spread, um, which again, that's, you know, yield spreads definitely are coming back into play. Uh, the 10-year yield spread, oh, sorry, the German uh, minus Italian yield spread, uh, minus US yield spread, sorry, um, did peak at the same time as Euro dollar in February, and since then it has narrowed as sovereign strains combined with, um, you know, the, the, um, the, the prospect of further ECB action has, has pushed that down and pushed um, German bond yields down um, relative to US ones. So it doesn't mean the US yields have been moving higher. It just means that German yields have been falling at a faster pace um, than, than US ones. And that has also, uh, also weighed, because remember, yield is one of the things that, pro that, that, um, is a, that feeds into a currency's value. When yields are lower um, in one country relative to the other, then that, suge that suggests that the currency should be weaker. So that, that does uh, meet in there. And as you can see, we could fall lower. I mean, this spread was lower back in, uh, back in December. Um, so there could be further downside yield perspective, which suggests that there could be further downside, uh, you know, the 128 level, maybe even down to the kind of 125 level in uh, euro dollar. Uh, Rob makes a good point, actually, that some people have been talking about, which was, um, you know, maybe Cyprus is more to do with Russia and EU affairs. So it's actually maybe a, Cyprus is just a pawn in this game. I think that's probably a good point as well. Uh, but they do both need each other. Obviously, Russia needs Euro the European Union for kind of its financial side of things uh, to, you know, financial markets slightly more slightly more credibility, obviously, than elsewhere. Uh, but also, um, Europe does need the energy markets, and actually, it does need its energy sector. And actually, you know, we've seen it in the past. If, if the EU does push Cyprus to the limit and um, does impose this levy and, and everything, and it hits uh, Russian deposit holders, you know, the next coal snap, could we see the gas tax turn, up, turn off? Maybe, you know, you need to look outside the box of this one and also look at the impact on commodity prices. So I'm just going to show you that, that now, actually. I'm going to show you the commodity price index, just to show how they're moving generally. Um, as you can see, commodities are still, still weaker across the board. Uh, but we've seen some interesting things. Um, I'm going to show you Brent crude here. There's been some divergence in the, in the currency space. So this is Brent crude here, as you can see. It really... Um, just let me put this, uh, as you can see, um, you know, really been, um, you know, trying to make a bottom, actually, around about kind of just below 110, around about that 108 level. That looks like good support for now. Um, and we've got key resistance, which is holding at 109.50. Again, I would say that, I, in my view, um, if we manage to get above this, if we get a close, we're currently at 108.80. If we get above 109.50, then I think we could see a, a move higher back towards 112. Uh, but Brent has been hit on this. But I think if we were to get a Nova, today, um, then people would, or, a, you know, an, or even, sorry, if we were to get a yes vote today, um, so antagonization of the Russians could actually cause uh, maybe some flows in, out of uh, European gas and into uh, oil as people diversify out of gas. So I think that is... Um, uh, is, is, is a good point, Rob. Actually, you bring, up a, you bring up a good point, but there you go. There's a kind of a hand pattern suggests... Uh, that we are making a bottom there. The other market's been trying to put in a bottom at 108. Um, I think that's also a good point because we know that Europe is still going through a cold spell um, right now. So, so there's probably a, a natural um, uh, support level there at 108. Um, and we may not see prices decline further back towards those 105 lows. You know, we went that far, we were back there in kind of October or late October, early November. And I think the weather patterns are going to have an impact on that as well. But again, again I would say that above 109.50, which is the yellow line in that chart, the 200-day 200, 200 moving average, above there is kind of, you know, the, the bias is then higher. Um, obviously, as we used to say below there, the bias is lower. But I would say we could just be range bound into this meeting. Um, I would say that, you know, a risk off event would hit. Brent hard and hit the commodity space hard. Now, the other thing I did want to show you was gold. Um, you know, as I was putting together, you know, just coming up with some ideas to talk about today, um, I did think, you know, one of the, one of the ways potentially to, to look at it is, you know, how did the such thing impact the markets? 
I would say that it affected in two ways. Number one, it really imp impacted the stock markets. We really saw stock markets get hit very, very hard. Uh, we, you know, especially banking stocks. And I will just show you that now. Let's just look at the euro stocks. Euro stocks, um, the banking sector of the Euro, of the Euro stocks um, index, and again fell very very sharply yesterday, back at kind of those December lows. Um, will it be, um, you know, will this be, um, you know, used as a buying opportunity? We don't know. We don't think so yet. We think there could be some more selling here. Um, let's just take a look at what that what this is doing today. We have reached a bit of a bottom, kind of just on the way to kind of one ten one ten fifty or one ten and a half. Uh, but we think the gains will be capped around about that 112.50 level in the uh, just the banking index of the or the banking sector of the euro stocks index. Uh, but that's where we really saw it. Um, again, I'm going to just show you kind of this four day chart, real sharp move lower. No way that we've refilled that gap. Um, the other place though was in FX. So it was like euro rally, you know, euro recovery rally has been quite futile. Um, <coughs> I would say that. Uh, you know, the, the other place where we saw it was gold. Um, let's take a look here. We saw gold get back above 1600, regain that key level. Haven't been able to make much headway, um, but I think it's, you know, the minute you talk about banks, deposits, money not being safe in banks, people will, may go to gold. Um, not in a big way, but in a, in a short way. They, this is mildly bullish for gold. And, and, and I think, you know, not that I'm saying we're now on an uptrend, but I think what it does suggest is that around about that 15 to 60 level, we've put in a downtrend. Uh, you know, the levels to target 16.25, maybe even up to 16.50, if you get an adverse outcome from this uh, vote, which takes place at 4 o'clock. Uh, sorry, yes, at 4 o'clock. Uh, London time today. Now the other thing um, that I'm going to be looking at is copper too. Um, it's just the first copper contract. Oh, that's not going to work. Uh, as you can see, kind of copper, um, it's managed to kind of rally. Oh, no, sorry, that's the wrong, that's not copper. I was going to say it's not been doing that at all. Copper fell very, very sharply. So those, uh, you know, in contrast to um, gold, which isn't industrial, hasn't benefited from this kind of pickup in global growth or pickup in U.S. growth particularly, um, you know, gold rallied on the back of what's going on with Cyprus, whereas copper didn't. Copper's a great um, sign of... Uh, of um, expectations about uh, growth going forward. The fact that copper hasn't moved with stock prices is slightly worrying to me. Um, I also think that we've now met, found some good support at that 340 level. Um, that is the low, obviously, as you can see there from November. Um, we, where we go from here is going to be really pivotal. Now, we could move lower. Uh, we could fall down to kind of 330, even down to those, those 320 levels, especially if we get another massive flare-up, a spike in risk, flare-up in the sovereign debt crisis. Um, however, if we don't, if we get a positive outcome, we could easily get back to this. These kind of mid-range highs, so highs from kind of last week, which is the 200-day moving average. Right now, kind of uh, uh, copper very much in consolidation territory, suggests that it's not willing to go one way or the other. No wonder, really. Just This is just me kind of speaking aloud in a, in a more longer-term um, outlook for copper. We have um, a few important things to point out or to, that's, that are worth pointing out. Firstly, that... Um, you know, copper's caught between a rock and a hard place. On the one hand, you've got the U.S. doing very, very well, but on the other hand, you have China not doing so well. So for us, that kind of key, that until we go one way or the other, either China picks up or the U.S. starts to slack, then we can probably remain range-bounded copper. Again, 320s, good, good support. Goes all the way back to uh, the middle of last year with three, um, 380 on the upside. Um, so, you know, right now, we're kind of in the, in the weaker end to that. We suggest that if things, if this Cyprus thing could be pushed over, then this is a good buying opportunity. This, then maybe any dips below back towards those, that kind of one th uh, 335 uh, could be used as buying opportunities in copper. So certainly worth looking at there. Um, the other thing, you know, it, I think as well with Cyprus, with the Cyprus issue, it's worth, it ha it's important for a couple of reasons. 
Oh, Jack's just asked me about Dolly Yen, and interesting enough, I'm just talking about that. Um, just bear with me one moment, and I will get there. Um, but um, it's been interesting for a couple of reasons. Number one, it shows how we've maybe got a little bit, got very immune to eurozone crises, and you know, places that have things that happen aren't having a massive impact on all markets, across all markets. Instead, the impact is kind of um, contained, maybe in like, for example, the banking sector, Santander, Spanish Bank fell five percent yesterday. We're seeing a more muted reaction in euro dollar whereby euro is able to hold on to that 130 candle um, dollar yen um, you know it's worth looking at kind of what the three traditional safe havens well we've seen got what gold has done that was the one um, traditional safe haven let's look at dollar yen now as you can see dollar yen came off acted as a safe haven um, on the back of the 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 news. Uh, we saw a, a sharp decline there all the way back down to kind of 94. Uh, but then kind of the dollar impact kicked in and people remembered that the Eurozone isn't um, fantastic, that the, the Japanese, the, posit, the, um, the argument for a stronger Japanese yen is um, is still there, is, is not as strong as it once was. So I think it does show that, you know, the, the initial reaction is a, is a is, a, is investors to go into the yen, but it doesn't last long. Maybe that's because people aren't so worried anymore about what's been going on with um, with with um, Cyprus. I don't necessarily think it's that. I think it's more the fact that you know the dollar is getting a double whammy as both a growth currency and a safe haven at the same time. Obviously not. Obviously not. Um, I, I mean, in the same kind of um, era, not quite at the same time. Obviously, it rallies one day on a safe haven, the other day on, on strong growth. So it seems like really uh, the dollar is good. You know, this just goes into that positive dollar theme, whereby the dollar is good um, in in kind of any environment because it's still acting as a bit of a safe haven when you know the proverbial hits the fan, and it's also acting as um, you know as a growth currency when things are steady and growth. You know, we get positive data surprises from the U.S. But just from a technical perspective, 21-day moving average, you can't beat it. Look at that. Held very nicely support there just ahead of 94. Um, and on the upside, we are running into a little bit of resistance um, around 94, 95 and a half. And, of course, then you've got that 97.50, but we're consolidating. And as I said, we are in consolidation territory. The market is taking a breather as it digests this outcome of the Cyprus vote. And again, if we get another delay in that Cyprus vote, which is not beyond the realms of credit of, uh, of, um, of possibility, uh, remember it's been delayed twice already, and then it could just extend this period of consolidation. But again, you've got to be ready to pounce in this environment. If we get below 94, then we could easily see back towards those kind of 92, 90 lows uh, from uh, you know, mid-Feb. If we get above, then we could be retesting 96 all the way up to kind of 97.5. So do watch out for that. So that's, um, someone said, is Dolly Yen in a peak then? Does Dolly, Dolly Yen correlation with the S&P? Um, yes and no. I'm just going to um, put up the, the S&P for you, and we can look at them together. Dolly Yen had a, has had a bit of a peak with, uh, with, with the S&P, as you can see here. And yes, there is this consolidation. So I would say that yes, um, it's not perfect, uh, but there is, the, I mean, the fact of the matter that it is kind of moving together, um, you know, the, the strong dollar has been mirrored in strong um, stocks. Again, that's kind of part of this dollar acting as growth currency. Um, again, with kind of stock markets, you know, with the U.S. markets, where do you think we could go? If we do get, you know, a close below kind of 15.50, we could see a sharper decline all the way back down to 15.10, which is the 50-day moving average. We could certainly see that if we get a no vote today. Because remember, U.S. markets will be open probably by the time that vote comes out, but you, you European ones probably won't be. So a knee-jerk reaction level could get us down here but I do think there's good support and I do think that you know right now it's um, you know you've got to invest in somewhere and the US does look more, more stable than Europe so why not go into kind of you know US stocks and buy them when they're cheap I think that's what a lot of people will think so I think you know picking up on dips 1509 maybe even this kind of 1485 lows from uh, late Feb uh, that could they, they'd be used good buying opportunities now the other thing I wanted to show you before you go before we go guys is cable as you can see here cable extended its gains uh, let's take a look here uh, we saw a bit of a sharp move hiring cable today on the back of um, inflation that was strong, that was um, uh, that had risen in February relative um, to uh, relative to January. That was expected. The headline rate ticked up to 2.8% from 2.7. Uh, again, that's kind of you know 
seen us, uh, seen us, um, you know, push higher, but not make any any big shakes. If so, we've not broken above kind of this 152, which is now key key support, and we actually think that uh, sorry, key resistance, and we actually think certainly in cable, uh, the upside will be limited because for us, the external environment might be supportive of the pound right now. Um, so external environment being, you know, the fact of that we're getting inflows into the pound relative to the euro, we've seen euros, euro sterling sell off. Um, but I think that the domestic environment is going to be all out negative, and actually the rally that we saw or the the knee jerk move higher that we saw, um, I'm not going to I'm not going to um, honour it with the word rally, but the knee jerk reaction we saw on the back of um, these uh, on the back or sorry on the back of these uh, this um, news from. Um, of news coming out of the CPI data, CPI from the CPI release is going to be short-lived. I think we've got two big risk events for the, for the pound. Take, even take out sterling, uh, sorry Cyprus. But we've got, um, you know, the first thing what we've got is that we've got is um, tomorrow's minutes. If we see a dovish slant at the bank, with maybe just it came to the vote, the vote to keep or the vote to keep QE. Um, at uh, stable in March, if that came down to one vote, so it meant another person joined the dovish camp. Uh, that could weigh heavily on the pound, get back down to that kind of, you know, maybe 150 and a half level. Um, the other thing to point out, of course, is the budget tomorrow. So big, big day. Um, a gross negative budget could also weigh very heavily on the pound. If there's going to be no fiscal support, that supports more QE, uh, inflation or not. Uh, so do watch out for that. Again, watch out as well for uh, the governor um, of the Bank of England actually saying whether or not they're going to, uh, whether or not they're going to do um, something along the lines of um, extending the remit of the Bank of England. So that's key. So as you can see here, some very natural support zones, 150, just below 150 and a half. On a, uh, just looking at the daily chart, obviously, you know, the lows here are kind of sub-149, uh, depending on how bad the budget actually is or how, pe you know, how people do react to that, I think there's a lot already priced in, so I don't think we're necessarily going to get sub-149, I think we could get sub-150 uh, but I think we'll end up being in consolidation mode um, until this Cyprus thing um, sorts itself out Now I think overall the market is waiting to sell the pound again and we'd like to see it kind of hurtle down that 140 highway um, but I think they may wait. Now, uh, Rob has said 52.20, good sell level. I completely agree. I mean, that's the high, as you can see from here. Um, big consolidation in the zone. Again, people aren't willing to go one way or the other. And you're kind of seeing that, right? We've kind of bounced along the bottom here for a while, but we're not seeing any directional bias in the market at the moment. And there's because there's a lot of unknowns. Obviously, the budget and the minutes tomorrow could be one of the key things. But I think overall, they're going to be quite negative. But then what could protect the pound from a big sell-off is, uh, is what's going on in Cyprus. So we could just go back to being kind of range bound for the time being. So overall, um, I see this, you know, overall, I think the market at the moment is just taking a breather. I think there are big event risks down there, which could be big risks out there, which could be very negative for risk assets, especially European stock markets, um, could be positive for gold in the short term. Um, Someone else has just said, some analysts think that the pound is technically basing. Well, I think there's a good argument to say it is technically basing. I mean, there's some, uh, you know, key kind of reversal patterns here on the daily chart. But I just think, you know, yes, we can, we can uh, make a revert. I just don't see us getting back to this kind of 158 highs that we were, you know, in... in you know, in, in February, I just don't. I just think the gain's going to be capped. I don't think people really want to go long the pound right now. Uh, but then I, you know, at the moment I see us more in a range trading activity, which is kind of good because it means you know you know where to buy, you know where to sell. 152.20 is your selling zone, uh, with kind of 150 and a half or what, just below 150.50 for the shorter term traders to buy on the downside, and then kind of 149.50 uh, for the slightly longer term traders. So do watch out for those support zones. Uh, okay, everyone, thanks so much. Good luck trading, and do join us next week for more. Thank you.